Good morning and welcome to Live Talk, the second in a series of online broadcasts from Face on Gold, an integrated project and program management consultancy. This event will give an overview of the UAE and KSA markets. Please post your questions in the box below as we go through the broadcast and they will be answered at the end. I will now pass over to our presenter, David Clifton, who is Faithful and Gold's Regional Development Director. Thank you, Shona, and good morning, everybody. As Shona mentioned, we're going to be just, uh, giving a highlight of what's occurring within the UA and KSA marketplace, starting from a macro perspective and then looking at the industry and some of the effects that are uh, occurring within the uh, two countries. So if we start with Saudi Arabia, Originally, when we published this report at the beginning of the month, the IMF was forecasting 0.4% GDP growth for um, Saudi, and this has been revised back to 0.1%, which is the fourth cut since the start of the year, at, uh, when we started out at 2%. So we're looking realistically at potential contraction if things were to continue, uh, although we'll come on to it later with the implementation of various different uh, taxes and other reforms, we could yet see positive growth as we fall through the rest of 2017. However, uh, to look at GDP, we have to look also at the per capita ratios, and it's, re it's relatively strong on an international level when we look at just over 20,000 US dollars uh, per person. And um, whilst we're seeing struggle within the government sector, which represents a, a rather large section of the GDP, and also the oil price has been suppressed, although it's starting to come back slightly, um, we should look at non-all GDP as around break-even this year. Moving through to the inflation side of things, we've seen it go considerably negative uh, so far this year, although we'll start to see a positive effect starting to pick up through the latter part of uh, this year, sort of Q3, Q4. We've already started to see the implementation of new taxation with doubling in tax uh, for tobacco, which is uh, going to drive uh, the inflationary prices there. Um, we've also had issues with inflation where such a dependency on the government sector for employment in, uh, has, has cut salaries and then reinstated. So there's a level of uncertainty. Uncertainty never actually breeds a great deal uh, of, of consistent growth. So we expect that businesses will also start to look through Q3 and Q4 implementing various uh, parts of VAT. That's not necessarily to say within our industry, but... Uh, historically, if we look at, say, retail for as, as a sector, there's been quick pass-through uh, when taxation is known to be coming, and Saudi Arabia's Ministry of Finance has already committed to the rollout of the 1st of January, along with the United Arab Emirates, which we'll come on to um, shortly. However, the point of interest, which is relatively positive, uh, is when we look at the trade surplus, which is still up uh, in the positive so far. Um, in the first quarter of this year, Q2 figures are yet to be published, where there's a trade surplus of over 96 million Saudi rials. So there, there is there is some positivity um, within that. Although, from a perspective of uh, nationalising things, at the moment the currency pegs keeping the rials slightly overweight, to say the least, which is making imports remarkably cheap at a, re at a local level. <clears throat> so if we move to the next slide. <clears throat> As I mentioned, the IMS revision down, <clears throat> but if we look if we look more specifically at uh, the fact that the oil price is actually slightly better than uh, was originally forecast, we're seeing the deficit start to contract. Which, uh, if we look at it from if we look at it from the perspective of any other country in the world, is actually relatively good news. Um, at a slightly more disappointing level, we've seen uh, construction as a percentage of the GDP uh, actually contract from 7% in 2015 to 6.2% uh, last year. And if we look at the growth of the economy at 1.4% in 2016, we've, we're actually starting to see the net effect of a, of a recession actually hitting the industry. Um, this is borne out. Uh, quite significantly with the fact that last year there was circa 3 million jobs lost within the industry in Saudi Arabia, um, which has been compounded around payment issues, which are starting to obviously flow through the system now. Um, however, we've, we've got some positive in there. Uh, in fact, the, the low debt, bar, the low debt uh, to GDP ratio of the country, um, having grown even from 2014 to 1.6% of GDP to 58 in 2015 and 13 or so percent last year, and we're forecasting around 17% uh, this year, compares incredibly favourably 
when you consider to developed and developing nations, we look at the UK at 90%, Japan at 245 and Greece at 180, and you start to realise there's plenty of borrowing capacity to be able to enhance and reform uh, in line with the National Transformation Programme and Vision 2030. And even if we look at uh, developing markets, um, it's, we've got China at 275 plus percent, uh, and, we, and that's up in 2016, and that's up from 250 plus, uh, percent in 2014, and is still heading towards 300. Um, and even if we take our most pessimistic forecast of nearly 50 percent debt to GDP by 2030, that's still incredibly manageable uh, as a country. And we've all, we've seen that borne out uh, with strong bond issuances and appetites from the markets, both last year and this year, when um, we had the massively oversubscribed $17.5 billion bond issuance in 2016, when there was over $65 billion offered. We've seen April, April 2017 with a $9 billion um, security and a $4.5 billion local bond, um, which is about $17 billion SAR, and uh, $51 billion was offered in just July. So there are positivity, and there's a strong uh, currency reserves to be able to, to look to um, to implement the reforms that are required uh, within the country to achieve its vision 2030. So if we look at the UAE overall in terms of uh, metrics, we're sort of tracking at around one and a half percent growth forecast in 2017. That's around as a similar number around 1.6 percent, uh, so within the margin of error uh, for, uh, from last year. Um, but it's, it's very interesting to note that the non-oil sector is gaining significant momentum currently as the country continues to diversify. Um, the IMS is forecasting around 3.3% growth in non-oil sectors uh, in 2017, which is a, a bit of a standout positive. Uh, and as the UA moves towards a target of 0% uh, percent of oil to GDP by about 2060, from the 30% at the back end of last year, uh, and we're moving towards 20% in 2021, this this steam will continue, and so we'll be looking uh, not so much at oil price to, um, issues to whether or not GDP growth will continue as to what's what's occurring within uh, the non-oil sectors. <coughs> And especially as we look also at looking to try and attract uh, foreign direct investment here, uh, attracting uh, talent, retaining talent, and then exporting talent um, from around the world. So, <coughs> pardon me. We do, we do, however, have a trade deficit in the UAE, um, which is at around 70 billion US dollars, but it's it's a relatively manageable uh, account, and we're starting to see that inflation is fairly steady across. Uh, the UAE uh, currently tracking for the year at around two, two and a half percent, and we expect the pickup to occur latter Q3, early Q4, for similar reasons to do with um, the VAT introduction across the UAE from the 1st of January 2018. And also, we're starting to see the implementation of SIM taxes coming through in October, so uh, similar to Saudi Arabia with 100% tax on. Uh, the tobacco and 50% on sugary, uh, sugary drinks. Um, however, so the UAE is in, a, in another very strong, is in a strong position in terms of its macroeconomics. Um, with, with debt to GDP is relatively low at 20%, and it's federally mandated not to rise over 25%, but it's, it's tiny by comparison to the global standards. If we were to look at global debt to GDP, we're, we currently borrowed over three times the amount of money that's in, uh, that's in GDP. It is, it is GDP. Um, we're also expecting that whilst, we've, whilst we see that there's a break-even stroke budget deficit depending on where you are currently sitting within the UAE, we're expecting that a lot of this can be sh uh, shored up with around 12 billion dirhams worth of VAT receipts in the first year alone uh, in 2018. Um, but with inflation rising, we're also uh, probably going to see the cost of living um, be a little bit more painful for people as we see wage growth this year expected to see the freeze will be up to around 2 to 3%. Um, so it is, there, should, there is some intrinsic pressure within the system, um, but it's uh, symptomatic of uh, developing economies uh, moving through the through phases of development. So the UAE has a very strong currency reserve, much like Saudi Arabia, and has uh, the second largest sovereign wealth fund out there. And if you were to collectively put together all the sovereign wealth funds within the UAE, uh, currently cash issue isn't necessarily there. 
Um, although we will still expect to see various different bond issuance and different financing types coming through the system, which we'll move on to shortly. So, moving on to the industry itself, we look at UAE construction awards that had steadily grown themselves up through the ranks uh, from the uh, from the post uh, financial crisis era of 2010-11 through to 2015 and then somewhat of a dip um, when we when we moved through to last year and we'll see, we, we expect to see a gradual pick up this year, um, primarily driven by uh, events and, uh, such as the Expo and also we started to see an increase in uh, Northern Emirates spending. We're just looking at Sharjah's budget, a uh, record budget this year at $22 billion of which over 30% is committed to infrastructure. Uh, we've seen the awards this year broadly in line with what we were expecting uh, in terms in terms of the awards to date and historically for the UAE and indeed other countries within the GCC the award system ha uh, has a tendency to be slightly back ended in the calendar year which is also a fiscal year so given the weight of a regional government spending being uh, part of these awards we tend to see the engagement of uh, contracting at sort of Q, at late Q3 and Q4, especially prevalent when you combine the fact that we have the summer in the way in this region, which tends to be a relatively quiet period. And we had a, a longer summer, as it were, this time around, as the falling from Ramadan just before the school holidays uh, and people, people disappearing for uh, their summer breaks. Now, it's an interesting one to note in the UAE that um, in terms of there's been no dominance of mega projects, um, the the largest ones out there to, uh, being Nikhil's Deer and Mal uh, and, and ones a bill, but there's been a lot of fill in, uh, so we've been looking at established uh, master plans that are uh, existing and have been broadly built out to a point. So when we look at downtown, Business Bay, uh, the marina, there has there have been a relative clamour there. Uh, to, to to build, obviously the infrastructure costs being lower, and when we've seen the uh, the prices of real estate, for instance, being dropping by somewhere between four and ten percent, depending on asset type, last year, uh, combined with a, a relatively flat construction inflation base, uh, the feasibility of certain of building of building major schemes can sometimes be given a little bit of a, a poke in the side. So we expect to still see continued awards this year. We've, we've got uh, international liquidity which will move th uh, through to the system um, and we're looking at alternative financing. Uh, as we've already seen that Dubai's PPP law is, has got its first uh, project in the airlines which is at Union Oasis um, and we'll also start to see a continued export credit agency uh, such as UKEF from United Kingdom Export Finance and SACE from Italy uh, coming to the table to enable certain schemes that are, uh, are, are either um, viable or related potentially to the Expo, or indeed Mactoon Airport expansion. So, <clears throat> pardon me. So we we and combining that with uh, with the international numbers that are, a, are available from the financial system. Uh, I mean, last we had problems the last year because international liquidity had contracted according to uh, Bank of International Settlements by around 11% mid 2015 to 16, and around 15% at a regional level, uh, which with government with combined with government. Uh, Drawdowns um, across the GCC meant that uh, loan deposit ratios were, uh, went a little high. But now we've seen, for instance, in the UAE that uh, LDR, that loan deposit ratio, has dropped below 100%, which is a sign that uh, in certain instances they'll be uh, back to back to lending. Well, although on an international level, uh, being that this is a global destination, um, there are there is still first an interest, um, especially. When you consider from just a, just even from a, from a regional perspective, we can, uh, we still see that uh, Dubai, especially, but the UAE in general, is seen as a flight to safety for any kind of unrest that may be occurring. So, uh, as uh, as all of that combines, we expect to start seeing larger awards uh, coming through, um, and especially when you start, hopefully, they start to fire up uh, the airport, and we start to look at ma major mixed-use master plan schemes such as the email developments at Dubai Hills and Dubai Creek Harbour uh, and you look at um, work, work in Abu Dhabi at Yas, for instance Yas Island as an example.
So KSA has been uh, much better in terms of awards this this year to date than overall from last year, although one must admit that that was starting from a pretty low baseline in total. Um, we have seen a, a very strong surge uh, during Q1 where there was around $11 billion worth of awards in Saudi Arabia, and this was primarily driven, uh, to be fair, by the GACA uh, drive for PPP, um, which we expect significant uh, further alternative funding projects to be coming to market, the terminology PPP, but we've got a variety of different mechanisms that sit within there. We've already seen dependent water and power projects um, coming through the system, and uh, GAC has already had its, awarded its three uh, major airports, and it's in, on a more traditional funding level. It will be looking to its domestic airports uh, as a rollout scheme, uh, and this will this will be a driver behind the privatisation as GACA is ported over to PIS, the Public Investment Fund, uh, as they're looking as part of the greater economic diversification. So, in half one this year, uh, around 16 billion were awarded, and our, our figures function in the requirements really for for getting a large large section of Maca Metro to be awarded uh, to main contracting. Um, having said that, that uh, if some of the alternative funding schemes within the government sector are accelerated uh, slightly quicker than was perhaps anticipated, we could see some Q1 draw through uh, into the back end of 2017. So as, a, as an industry though, we've been losing uh, backlog uh, which, is which is causing concern. Um, Saudi um, is down roughly 20 billion uh, US uh, in terms of numbers required, uh, and has seen a sh much sharper drop uh, as we would, uh, than we would have expected in terms of compared to the UAE. Uh, they had lo a lot of schemes, very large schemes, running in parallel, so their their peak load uh, arrived at a very similar time, uh, whereas the UAE was a little bit more staggered in that respect. So I think that there's, there's positivity and there's some, there's some relative bright lights that are sitting out there at the moment. Um, it just needs a lot of these things to come to fruition. And when you move through the fact that the government's drive towards project management offices across the, uh, across the kingdom is factored in, um, as well as <clears throat> the new drive towards alternative funding, we can see that uh, there is drive uh, and there will be things coming back, but it's really more, I think, 2018-2019 play in terms of when it when we start to see everything starting to ramp up to a, to a, to a greater level. Um, the days of maybe getting the kind of level of awards that we saw in 2012-13, sorry, 2011-13. Um, may not uh, yet come, uh, be a sustainable level, but hopefully we can return to um, a bit more growth within the industry. So if we look at how materials have been impacted across KSA, due to the shrinking backlogs that we mentioned earlier, we're seeing significant supply chain, supply chain pressure. Uh, as people are, are basically hunting for working and trying uh, to mitigate the sharp drop in backlog that we started to see uh, come through in late 2015 through 2016, and also looking for uh, find capital and payments uh, because we had a we had a bit of a starvation during the first three uh, three quarters of last year. So we expect that. Whilst we've seen significant drops across the board, that we'll, that we'll start to see uh, a little bit more upward pressure. The combination with Saudi Arabia of uh, a dip last year in uh, commodity prices, as although strengthening a little bit towards the end of the year on the macro on the international market, just compounded the, the slump. Um, and <clears throat> you know we'll start we'll start to see the ta uh, other taxis coming in. Um, it's interesting to note a recent uh, paper by PwC that uh, believes that we're going to start seeing the uh, implementation of uh, greater customs tax for importations. So at the moment, at five percent, it may move through to twelve to fifteen percent, uh, depending on product type. Now, a certain product is not going to make too much difference uh, because they can be well they can be well nationalised and they currently are nationalised or being nationalised. So what I mean is being locally produced. 
uh, so you're less likely to see uh, massive impacts. But there are certain uh, other products where we'll start to see some uh, potential upward pressure uh, during the next 12 months, uh, especially when you obviously combine that with the introduction of VAT across the industry. So we look at UAE. UAE is a bit a bit flatter in many respects, uh, and it's a bit more robust. Um, and that's broadly because we have we've seen the drop in backlog being quite significant. Um, but we've got various different scheme major schemes running at different points on the on the peak load curve. Um, the concern more comes around if there's no pickup later this year, early next year, to be able to start. Um, and uh, start uh, redressing the backlog. There's still supply chain pressure, uh, although the full effect, as I mentioned, hasn't hasn't actually fallen right the way through. And to a greater or lesser degree, uh, KSE's uh, decreases were compounded by the uh, payment issues, whereas in the UAE it, it's not necessarily has been as great an issue uh, as for the. Uh, for the businesses that operate in the industry, uh, although I'm not so saying it's always good. So, moving moving onwards, we look at, for instance, the commodity example. We're starting to see uh, strengthening within the commodity markets, and there is there is the potential to continue to see some uh, upward nudges in in terms of just macro pressures uh, and macro pricing. Uh, we saw, for instance, uh, Reba, we had a we had a massive international steel dump um, by uh, by China within the marketplace, which it's promised and has thus so far reined in and has started to cull and cut production. But we are seeing a global growth trend within the construction industry of approximately 2.8 percent per annum to 2021. Um, and if you if you factor in the global growth, it'll probably be just over three percent. We we may not get much of a price rise. It may there may be the occasional dips and spikes. Um, but the big plays here would be uh, for would be China's slowing dramatically in the construction sector, which has started to slow itself. Or, uh, and also the potential plans for the President of the United States wishing to put one to one point two trillion US dollars into the uh, rebuilding of America's infrastructure, which could change could change global dynamics slightly. But on a on a on a regional level, um, we will we will feel minor minor effects for the time being. <clears throat> Worth noting then that it, both Saudi Arabia and the UAE actually between them represent one percent of global construction values. So to, to look at where we believe that inflation is going to be going in terms of 2017, 18, and 19, there's still huge pressure within Saudi Arabia <coughs> in, uh, as construction wars haven't actually picked significantly up. And as noted earlier, we've seen uh, redundancies in uh, capacity of uh, growth within uh, the kingdom. But we do start to see a little bit of upward pressure later this year because the 5% in uh, VAT that's being passed through to, um, to to almost everything that touches our industry will, st will have to start coming into play. Um, and next year we'll see a relatively relative pass through of all of it, and as we start to move into 2019, slightly more normalised, although we should still be expecting further subsidy cuts and further tax dynamics to, to be introduced, um, so monitor the tax experts' websites closely uh, as to what may be yet down the road. In the UAE, uh, it's, a, it's a broadly comparable picture, but slightly more in terms of an upward trajectory. Um, We've seen so far this year inflation to be relatively flat, uh, whereas KSA has been negative positive uh, from buy prices. Uh, and next year we will start. We, we expect a broadly similar because we believe that the peak load uh, in terms of people getting busy is probably back in the next year, beginning of the following year on expo-related work. But also as we start to, to see all of the funding being contracted to developers, government entities, semi-government entities, and then we return to a normal uh, level of growth uh, and inflationary pressures uh, during the course of 2019 at this time. So with that, uh, that concludes our sort of half 25 minute, half an hour briefing in terms of what's happening at a macro level um, in KSA and the UAE. And with that in mind, um, I'd like to invite any questions from the audience.
Okay. If anyone does have any questions, please type them in the question box below the slides. Yeah, okay, no problem. If there are, if there are <coughs> I assume that it's, it's all clear to everyone. So there's um, no further questions. Then thanks for those that have joined the call, and uh, feel free to get in touch with me um, through the school website if you have any other que any other questions you'd like directly addressed, and I'll do my best to answer them. What are the sources of ah, we've got something from Norman. What are the sources of data figures and how confident in the level of data? Well, it's an interesting one because we obviously collect, we obviously collect our own data from our own uh, work, our own projects, our own interaction with our client base. But also I aggregate this across uh, a variety of different sources and in, in across the industry on a macro level and also an industry level. So from a macro level, um, you sources could and do include anything from Bloomberg to The Economist to um, CNBC to the BBC to CNN to Reuters um, and a more regional stroke uh, industry level. Uh, we, we, are, we rely a lot, of course, on the fact that we've got quite a lot of good relationships with clients and potential clients across the region as, an, as a company. But also, we, you will look, I'll look through all of the industry standard issues, so anything from uh, need to construction week to um, consultancy magazines. But a lot of our regional uh, information is, is brought from within our teams. In terms of confidence, like anything, when looking at what's occurring within the uh, in, when when you look at anything within forecasting, for instance, uh, and also looking at where how accurate all the information is, there's always a margin of error. When you're forecasting, it, it's just that. It's forecasting. You look at economic forecasts, you default position for growth for, mo uh, for most economics would be 3%. But we we reasonably confident about a lot of the data that we have collated because we've, we've been tracking it quite carefully and we have quite a lot of uh, individuals obviously working with our project management unit. There are, of course, things that will be missed things that may be overstated or understated, um, but that's just it. It's us trying to aggregate it as best as possible and then test it against other people's logic. I hope that answers the question. Can you give a general, for Can you give a general forecast on the construction market for HT? I mean, look, we've, in terms of, we expect to see a certain level of growth um, coming back towards Q3 and Q4. There's a prime in, in the KSA and UAE, and there's primary reasons um, for that are A, around potential alternative funding, especially when we start to see what's looking through in Saudi Arabia. B, we're starting to see um, money from an international perspective looking to come into the uh, the region, although we must remember that each scheme is in competition with other schemes, so it needs to be a, a relatively decent deal. But um, I, I do believe that there will be a similar quantum of awards, if not more awards, coming through over the course of the year. We've had a we've had we had two spikes in so far as we've had well, sorry, one major spike in so far as GACA awarded far more than was expected really in the first half of this year, but that was driven a lot by the Riyadh redevelopment, uh, Riyadh Airport redevelopment. And then I, and you're starting to now get to the point where for the UAE, um, a, lot of, a lot of the awards relating to Dubai Expo, which is a $7 billion government end up commitments uh, and also the sentiment it may it, it should drive in terms of other uh, in other developments and it is a lot of the sentiment play so I do expect it to get improved. 
So Norman, can we get a copy of the slides and sources information? Yeah, I've just outlined all of the sources that um, we utilise, and I've uh, and a copy of the slides. Yeah, yeah no problem. Uh, Sean will agree to email. See any price of the oil price to increase? I think uh, from AJ, are you seeing any possibility of the oil price to increase in the coming months? I think forecasting oil price is like shoot, is like shooting shooting at the duck, uh, duck range. Um, it's not something that I mean. Goldman Sachs said it was going to fall below twenty dollars a barrel. Standard Chart said it was falling below ten dollars a barrel. Neither of which happened. I think there's potential for it to get slightly stronger, uh, but I think um, most people consider the uh, most people who specialise in this area consider that that fifty, sixty, and in later in another year, say maybe seventy dollar range might be considered to be the new normal. Although it all seems to be very cyclical in terms of its its nature over a twenty, thirty year horizon. Um, but again, I'm not really an expert in that area. When do you think we will, Grant? When do you think we'll see PPP projects underway in the kingdom? What is holding these up? I think, I think, Grant, a lot. Of, I think a lot of it's the practice of getting consortia, the consortia together, and also the also making sure that there's a fundamental understanding. Um, now, obviously, these PPP projects have got upside and downside risk, which doesn't necessarily uh, aggregate in terms of the normal contracting mechanisms that we're used to. Uh, so there's a level of sort of getting used to another way of working, um, and I do believe that they will start coming through. I mean, when you look at GAC is often underway because it's it's got an example that it's managed to work with, so the PEV joint venture for Medina Airport, uh, and you're starting to see them coming through for uh, Riyadh redevelopment, TAFE, etc. And um, and you look at independent water projects and independent power projects. They've got a tested model uh, globally, and one that's easy for them, easy to understand, uh, and doesn't uh, it doesn't have to be overtly complex. Um, so that's part of it. And also, I do believe that there's there's a level of getting these getting some of this project management office in there. You're starting to see the national project management office making some making some hot level changes. But I think there's a level of time to throw it flow down through the system if we look at how many dozens of agencies that have got to go through this process. Uh, and then it's a, then it's attracting organizations who have that understanding to deal with it and also bringing, bringing numbers to the money to the table. So I think that's broadly the reasons where, there's, where, there's being, where they're being held up. Normally, how finance ministries are being taken on board while you analysis and assessment? I don't really understand. I'm not quite sure I understand the question. Um, how finance ministries are taking taking on board? Well, finance uh, finance ministries published quite quite a lot of data that we utilise. Uh, Norman, I mean, you've got entirely the general authority for statistics, and also in the UAE, Dubai, and Abu Dhabi, both published a variety of different statistics themselves, which we obviously incorporate into our analysis. Um, and the and Ministry of Finance, Saudi, uh, for instance, I, that that deficit that I published on one of the first slides, it comes from it comes from a comparison between what the Ministry of Finance says and Samba says in Saudi Arabia, and also what the uh, the IMF and the World Bank have said. I'm just putting all of them over the top and making some sensible deductions um, based on that. And again, mm, how? Okay. How many finance in that? Okay. No more. Okay. With that, um, I think that's the end. And uh, thanks all for joining the call. And uh, if you do wish to get in touch via fgold.com send me a message if I have any further questions and if I'm able to answer them of course we'll come back to you thanks very much